This one was not planned because this will be tough as we have not much backstory on Satoshi Takeda. Not only due to recast his character gets a major shift into a complete different direction in season 2. But inspired by my video about Emily Thorne's revenge tactics I will try to undercover this mysterious mentor of her. Guess what in retrospect it is him and this legal guardian in prison or prison ward slash security whatever, who sets something in motion that leads Amanda to want revenge. Yes Nolan gives her the infinity box with the diaries and makes her read them. But it was the prison lady who first put the thought into her mind that it is better to manipulate people behind the scenes than to confront them right away and solve problems with violence. You are just about one bad day away from spending your life in a place like this. So you got a bad deal. But you got something else going for you. You're smarter than most of these girls. Oh, you want to go up against the whole world, that's your business. But violence is a short-sighted solution when it really comes to handling your enemies. There's better ways to go about it. Smarter ways. Like what? You get her trust, and you have her work for you instead of against you. Understand what I'm saying? In a twisted way she is the first one who brings Emily aka Amanda to another better path for her future. I am not saying that this was a right or in anything healthy advice. Cause I think that not at all. But it was something Amanda needed right now. Someone who lead the way. So she was an easy target for Takeda who manipulated her much more. But before we start with his backstory a few thoughts on Aiden and his relationship with Takeda. Because he has a lot to do with the shift in Takeda's character and storyline in season 2. This shift might have been interesting if they had built it up in season 1 and gave it more space and time in season 2. How they tell us this through Aiden just seems only to be written to exonerate him in front of the audience. Cause he killed the most important man in Amanda's life after her father. A man who influenced her much more than anyone else in her adolescence. I think they were afraid that Aiden could turn out like Daniel. Cause by the end of season 1 and in the beginning of season 2 they pretty much destroyed his reputation. And made him a villain like his parents. As if Daniel was some kind of mini Conrad or that he would at least follow his footsteps. I guess he had always good reasons to do so but all the people Aiden killed left quite a body count on his side. I mean Daniel tried to kill in every season. First Tyler, then Aiden and Emily. And he was indirectly responsible for Pascal's murder. But he never finished the job. Jack killed one person in self-defense and they made quite a big deal out of it. Are you gonna be alright Jack? No, I'm in. Okay. I know, I know. I killed an FBI agent, a bad one, but still, we lied about it. We conspired to hide her body. I go through it all over again. Yes, but I still have to live with what I've done. But Aiden killed four people that we know of. His first kill was even before he was trained by Takeda when he murdered the Russian sex trafficker. Aiden, no! Don't do this. No good will come of it. Please, don't do this. And this was cold-blooded murder, no self-defense. <laughs> by the way this seems to be a difference in Emily's and Aiden's training. Maybe because the writers are a bit sexist here. Or because Emily is our heroine and they were not brave enough to turn her into a trained assassin. But I think that was what Takeda made out of him. He obviously only became Takeda's student because Emily wanted him to be. You convinced Takeda to take me on? I blackmailed him. <sighs> Told him it was both of us or neither. <laughs> so I suppose he should serve two needs. First being a protector for Emily. Maybe Aiden was right after all that Takeda planned him to fall in love so he had someone who was willing to protect Emily with his life. Oh, it makes you wonder, a guy that's smart, maybe this was Takeda's plan all along. Hey he could have even created those circumstances under they met. It was always some kind suspicious to me why he told Emily about Aiden's sister Colleen and sent her onto this mission in the first place. Her name is Colleen. She was kidnapped and sold by Dmitry Bladov, 1993. I mean she already had laid out her plan to start her own revenge mission and was about to leave for the Hamptons. How are your plans against the Graysons? On schedule. I've severed all ties with Noel Cora, closed all my bank accounts, set up six dummy friends, one of which just bought a building on 57th Street. Turns out, Conrad Grayson was sleeping with one of Victoria's best friends, Lydia Davis. I was working on a strategy to turn their infidelity into my entree that was before you gave me this diversion. And again the timeline, what was she doing after this? There are five years between this mission in 2006 and her finally going back to the Hamptons in 2011. Was Takeda not convinced that she was ready for this and therefore made her continue her training with him? Did he send her on another mission? I recently purchased this little book they published between seasons which should fill in some blankets but is seriously poorly written. 
though the design and the comic-like drawings are not that bad. Anyway it is not more than a variation of this flashback episode from season 2. Anyway it seems Aiden is trained in a different way. In order to protect Emily and have someone who can do the job when she is too reluctant. Takeda obviously was from the beginning not convinced that Emily could see her revenge mission through. Maybe he wanted to finish this as his own personal vengeance and Emily should only provide the needed information. So he could have been in the background. Aiden was some kind of backup. Not only to keep her safe, but to take orders and fulfill them without asking questions and being prepared to kill for his and Emily's success in revenge. With his first killing on the show, Gordon Murphy. He definitely proved his worth. He protected Emily and did not think twice. Even though this move made her search for her mother far more complicated and delayed her mission. The second killing, Trask was kind of necessary. Not only for revenge's sake. I mean they had to find a way to get rid of all this initiative mess. And killing him off was the easiest way. Nolan could not do it for obvious reasons. Why? That would have destroyed this character. So they went for Aiden cause he already murdered someone. And taking revenge for Colleen and Padma was fitting in this moment. Okay you can say he could have just left and expose himself to the risk Trask might implicate him with whatever he had in mind by luring Aiden into this trap. But Aiden is hot tempered and does not think things through like Emily. So for me this killing was maybe the most fitting for him. It was not in defense. It was solely his decision and it was brutal. Because he did not just shoot him but strangled him. Like with his own death in season 3, the writers of Revenge are quite good in capturing the difference that it makes how you kill someone. Shooting is quick and you mostly have a big distance between murder and victim. But strangulate someone is personal and slow. You can feel the life draining out of someone. Sorry if that is too explicit but I am watching the vampire show True Blood again. So maybe this is influencing my thoughts on this a tiny little bit. Anyway shooting is fast and after you pull the trigger there is no way back. But taking a life by strangulation leaves plenty of time for second thoughts. I cannot think of an example in a TV show right now but I am sure they did play around with this. And showed us a murder attempt in which the potential killer stopped and followed his doubts and conscious that are obviously screaming in such moments. Now to his last killing, Takeda. Killing him off was something I will never understand fully. I get that he became some kind of a threat for Emily and Aiden. By exposing Aiden you've put both of us at risk. Sub-Zero world when your own sensei stabs you in the back. You let us both go and I promise you'll never learn about your true objective. You were never gonna let us go, were you? Though I cannot see why. Yet they would have been plenty other ways to solve this. Especially since he was not someone who pulled the strings from behind. I mean in all of his scenes with Emily. Except his introduction maybe. Remember, inside the viper's nest, you must be a viper too. We see how he loses control over her. First because of her feelings for Daniel and in flashbacks we see that happened before with Aiden. I'm coming with you. No, it's too dangerous. Exactly. I've already lost everything. I'm not losing you too. So Emily was already drifting away from him. Okay she did not question him or his methods and what he taught her. But Aiden would have definitely had an angle to seed some doubts here. In the end he could have just told her right away when he found out what Takeda's hidden agenda was. Tried to stop me and she learns the truth tonight. And if fighting to the death with his former mentor was an extreme move he was willing to make. He could have also used even more extreme measures by exposing him to the Graysons. This could have been a win-win for all. Emily had another scapegoat to show off for all the things she had done in the last year to torture the Graysons and their conspirators. And reveal the truth about the David Clark trial. Aiden would have gone rid of Takeda. Emily would have been saved from suspicion again. Finally the Graysons would have had a new target for their wrath to be occupied and distracted for a while. Yes this would have been a desperate and dangerous move. Since Takeda like Fomander had the potential to destroy Emily's whole revenge ender by revealing her true identity. But his code would have forbidden to expose his student to such a danger. And even though it is never addressed. He might have grown fond of her during their training. I mean it cannot only be that he is using her to get revenge. I do not think that he truly loves her or that anything comes near to a fatherly bond. Cause then he would have checked on her far more often and been far more involved in her revenge ender. I mean he only shows up when she is reaching out to him. Fear I'm losing control. As you were warned, revenge is a stony path. How can I be of service? And in season 2 he obviously is only curious about the initiative and fears that the progress Emily and Aiden made is also destroyed by them. They're planning a second strike. And you're here to stop them, aren't you? So let's move into his a bit cloudy backstory. 
in season 1 they made some choices that were undone in season 2. Obviously because they did not know or even counted on getting a second season. Some still think the show was better off with just one season. I strongly disagree but this is another discussion. Takeda was introduced as Emily's mentor. He followed this prison guard lady as some kind first person who cared enough for Amanda to talk some sense into her. I need that anger and confidence. You will learn to balance it with patience and observation. Anyway after finally realizing that her father was not responsible for the crime he was convicted and died in prison. Amanda gets on her quests for answers. The teenage girl is not ready to confront the Graysons right away, but she goes after the one person who knows about the conspiracy and did not do anything about it, Roger Halstead. What are you doing here? After my father died, he left me his journals. He claims he's innocent. He was found guilty in court. But he said that you knew the truth, that he was set up. And if I told you he was right, what would you do with that information? I would make sure that everybody knew about it, that these people got what they deserved. Is that what you did? You just dropped it, drank until it all went away? I think getting in touch with the conspirators and seeing that everything seems to work out fine for them, including the Graysons full her anger again. And unless somebody does something about it, they will never get what they deserve. One way or another these people are gonna pay. They're gonna pay for what they did. You cannot bring the Graysons down all by yourself. The hell I won't! So finding Roger killed by these people to cover the conspiracy up once more is the last thing that made her realize she has to do something about this. I guess this appeals so much to my sense for justice that it is no coincidence this still is my all-time favorite episode from Revenge. Anyway she prepares to set her revenge mission in motion. First by reaching out to Emily Thorne and make sure her true identity keeps hidden. After their identity swoop she calls Takeda and tells him that she wants to continue her training. Which always kept me wondering how long this was going on. I mean before she came out of jail and Nolan made her read the diaries of her father. She believed all those lies like everybody else and hated her father. So she had no reason before 2003 to even consider going after the Graysons. But let's ignore this and the open question how she get in contact with Takeda in the first place. Maybe he was someone who provided anger management seminars. And Amanda got in touch with him during her discharge process at Allenwood. After she confined in him about the last traumatic events he could have revealed his true business of revenge schools to her. I mean she inherited a fortune so she had enough money to afford such kind of special education. Or her first contact could have been due to a scam he put up just to get in touch with her. Cause he obviously researched everything surrounding Flight 197. And he must have stumbled early on about this tragic story of David Clark's daughter. Another thing which I think would have been cool to explore. Only if he had become a series regular of course. How he stands to her and her father. In that flashback from season 2 it seems as if Takeda is just provoking her with his sayings about her father. He was a bad man. Shut up. He didn't do anything wrong. Because of him many people died. He wants to trigger a reaction and see if he is right about her and her most obvious trigger. But how does he know David Clark is innocent? I mean he could have planned to destroy his daughter to get in some kind even with the terrorist who destroyed his life. Which brings us to the reason why Takeda is doing all this. For Amanda her motives were always clear and in season 1 we the audience in some kind accepted that Takeda guided her. I always assumed this was his business and she paid him for his advice. Though this could not explain their close relationship and the power he has over her. Though they have only a handful scenes in season 1 we get very quick how much Takeda formed her way of thinking and her behavior. The task in front of you requires absolute focus. Prioritize the obstacles to your end goal. Eliminate them. One at a time. Engage your ultimate opponent to do the work for you. Yet in their last scene from season one, it gets clear that he also misuses her. You should have heeded my warning. I did not want to train you because your emotions destined you to fail. Yes, I agree with his analysis that her increasing feelings for Daniel could become a problem for her during her mission to destroy his family. Cause she always will think about how this affects him as well. Yet he does not offer her some kind of solution here. I can do nothing more. He just walks off and says that she is on her own now. As if he was punishing her for some misbehavior. And he does not even change his mind when she pleads him not to go. I mean how sad is this? Please, don't abandon me. The decision was yours. You are on your own. In this moment he obviously traumatizes Emily again by leaving her behind like her father and her mother did all those years ago. Yes David left her not willingly and until now she and Takeda think her mother died. But the pain she felt and the fear of being left behind by the most important person in her life is true and very real. 
and Takeda uses it, not only to strengthen their bound but to undermine her other relationships. It is obvious why he sees Daniel as a threat to their mission. Not because of her feelings for him but because of his influence on her. Takeda wants full control over Emily. And from his point of view he managed pretty well to control every important aspect of her mission. He set up her agenda and her targets. He trained her to research very thoughtfully and deep before she takes any actions. He even recruited Nolan to keep taps on her because he obviously cannot. How long have you been working for Takeda? What are you talking about? And how did he recruit you? He cozied up to me at the investor shindig earlier this summer. He wanted me to look out for you. Why didn't you tell me? Because he told me not to. He can be very convincing. And then there is Aiden to make sure she keeps on track and does not go sideways. Tell Takeda I don't need a nanny. Takeda didn't send me. But he didn't stop you either. Till the beginning of season two that played very well out. Emily had her mentor she could call when things became difficult. And Takeda knew he would get his revenge in the end. It would take some time but he had just to be patient. Yet by the end of season two the writers decided to change his personality completely. From this intriguing and very ambiguous father surrogate for Amanda to a very hard resentful and manipulative old man. I get what they wanted to achieve here. From the beginning with Emily's quest for answers about to her mother they show us that Takeda is losing control over his former students. Had I known that was your intention, I wouldn't have welcomed your return to training. You would throw away your training on the unsupported assumption that your mother remains alive. Dead or alive, I'm gonna find out what happened to her and when I do, God help the people who kept me from her. And that includes you. First he tries to fix this by sending Aiden back to Emily. But then when Aiden finds out that it brings him no peace to take revenge. This path that you've let us down leads nowhere. I killed the man who murdered my sister. It gave me no peace. So vengeance isn't the answer. He goes after his mentor because he wants to protect Emily from feeling the same emptiness he feels now. I must admit this could have been a very romantic notion for Aiden. But all we get after he killed Takeda is Emily's anger vibes and how he betrayed her once more. Finally we get to know what his motives are in helping Amanda. It is not because she pays him and he has some kind of revenge business for all kind of students and purposes. By the way they changed this back in season 3 when Emily talks with Nolan and her first husband he was also a student of Takeda. And I still think this was the better background story. Giving his really limited screen time. And merely plot device function in season 1. You were schooled in revenge too? When I first went to Japan, Rohan was training with Takeda. He's since completed his mission. How did yours end? Is the person who wronged you in jail dead? Worse? We're taught once our goal's complete, not to mention it again. Back to season two. When Emily discovered Takeda's body, they also find his infinity box. Takeda's infinity box? Who is this woman? I have no idea. Another thing I really disliked about this. Because the wooden box was something her father made for Amanda. When she's ready, I want you to make sure that she gets this. It's her future and had initially nothing to do with her revenge mission. Emily herself gave this meaning to the infinity box because this and her revenge ender was the only thing besides her memories that connected her to her father after he was gone. Nolan and Emily cannot make sense of the picture they find. It is Aiden who later reveals that Takeda's fiancé who worked as a flight attendant was on the plane that the initiative blew up. You were not the only ones affected by Flight 197. Takeda's fiancé was on that plane when it went down. May Aoki, she was a 24-year-old flight attendant who took the jump seat on the deadhead to New York. The jump seat was never recorded, please. You have to believe me. Takeda trained you as a soldier for his war, not yours. So Takeda is out for blood as much as Emily and Aiden. He wants to revenge the death of the love of his life and used his students for that. I still think they might even got away with Aiden making this up just to excuse him killing their mentor. Emily even calls him out on this. I don't believe you if you knew all that time that Takeda had a separate agenda. Why wait until now to tell me? Because I knew how much he meant to you. I surely prefer to think of it like that. Because Aiden did not really intend to kill Takeda. Like always he was doing it for Emily and their relationship. I kept this secret from you because I love you. He feared that Takeda would steal Emily away from him again. In the end it comes up to a rivalry over the biggest influence on Emily and her future. Aiden wants her to stop her vendetta and try to live a happy revenge-free life with him. Which maybe could have been the better choice considering how their relationship came to an end by the end of season 3. I see where the writers were aiming at. And in his manipulation there was always something sinister lurking even in season 1. But again Takeda was such a minor character and we did see so little of him and Emily. Their relationship was just not that well enough established to destroy it. So I definitely did not care whether if he was using Amanda for his own goals or if she paid him off to guide her revenge ender. In the end what difference does it make?
Again, the second version just adds trauma and hurt to Emily. And diminishes this proactive and empowering theme from season one, which can be best described in Michelle Banks' her therapist words. It's time for you to stop playing the victim. Time for you to start taking an active role in your own happiness. Every time I leave here, I feel more and more determined to take control. Instead of giving Emily the tools and set up to take control and spin the story that she was controlled by an older man. What the hell? The whole point of this show is to make us see how this little betrayed and broken little girl found the strength to fight back. This should be a story about how she is taking back control over her life and her future. You see this some kind of betrayal of the audience by the writers in season 2 goes deep with me. And since Takeda conveniently could not be there to defend himself I see it this way. Aiden freaked out after he realized that he killed Takeda, and of course is too afraid to tell Emily the truth, so he makes up this story to feel better about himself and to have something to tell to Emily. Maybe he even wants this to be true to make Emily's loss of Takeda a bit less hurting. He deflects not only Emily's anger from him to Takeda and his betrayal. He also gives Emily the opportunity to better cope with the emotional pain of her loss. To wrap this up, what do you think about Takeda? Do you agree with my thoughts on the differences of season 1 and season 2 Takeda? Let me know in the comments below.